All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. You know, I just wanted to take a little bit of time today to clear up some misconceptions around what a jewel is versus what an e-cigarette like this is. There seems to be a rather large disconnect between the policymakers and the vape industry on this topic because this is a very different product and technology than this. Since roughly 2009, open system vaping has been a mostly consumer-driven technology. Self-regulated, complete with child-proof bottles, listed ingredients, warning labels, and of-age sales in adult-only vape stores. Prior to June Jewel's arrival in 2017, a closed system, the highest nicotine available at that time on the market was 24 milligram, and the highest nicotine generally recommended for a pack a day smoker at that time was about 18 milligram. Even with 18 milligram on the market, the open vaping system's consumer's trend was for lower and lower nicotine levels, making three and six milligram the most frequently stocked and purchased nicotine level at vape shops across the country. To this very day, more than 12,000 independent open system vapor shops across the country still predominantly stock and sell 3 milligram and 6 milligram nicotine liquids. On average, it makes up roughly 85% of their total business. And the liquid in this bottle isn't even the same liquid that is used in the majority of these closed system jewel type devices. This liquid gets used in larger, more expensive, more advanced vaping devices devices, open system vaping devices, sometimes between $50 and $200. And that's just for the device. Add the cost of a $30 to $80 atomizer or tank on top, separate bigger batteries that require their own separate, more expensive proprietary charger. Open vape systems are not the products that youths are using to vape. Jewels or closed systems are absolutely the the products that youths are using to vape. Juul appeared on the market in 2017 and offered 50 milligram nicotine. They cost about 25 bucks and were made readily available at every gas station, convenience store, and tobacco shop across the country. Now, I don't know many middle schoolers that could afford the $250 price tag of an open style vaping system like this, but I could certainly imagine a group of teenagers that could gather up 25 bucks between them for a jewel. Coincidentally, in 2017, we see a sudden rise in youth using high nicotine jewel pods. Youths did not care about vaping for the last 10 years until it was able to give them that buzz like a cigarette could, and jewel came in and filled that market. With a much more reasonable price, a much higher nicotine level, and a smaller, more concealable design. When a governor makes an emergency declaration to ban flavored vapor products from the market, it's this open system that suffers. It's this market that is forced to close their shops and lay off their employees. A flavor ban will not have much of an effect on multi-billion dollar, mostly big tobacco owned and operated Juul. Juul has come out in favor of these flavor bans because they know it will eliminate most or all of their competition and essentially hand the entire vaping industry over to Juul and Big Tobacco. If a flavor ban passes in the state of New York, roughly 2,000 vape shop employees would lose their job overnight. Between Michigan and Massachusetts, hundreds of open vapor businesses have already been closed. Politicians cite concern over children and nobody disagrees, which is why it's already illegal for anyone underage to purchase nicotine products. And why vape shops strictly enforce over 18 and over 21 sales far better than convenience stores, as former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb has pointed out multiple times. Simply banning a product arbitrarily without bothering to understand it is infuriating to adults that have been using this technology for the better part of a decade to stay off of dead 
deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes, which are still the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. There needs to be a better solution than simply to ban them. In Utah, they raised the age to purchase tobacco and nicotine products to 21 and over. They limited all sales of flavored vapor products to registered and certified adult-only vape shops. And they had those vape shops hang up signage warning their customers not to purchase any illicit or black market THC products. Other states should be looking to Utah as a blueprint for how to handle not just the black market THC lung injuries, but also youth use while maintaining adult choice. Utah's actions actually address the problem in a very rational way. It will curtail youth use. It will curtail THC related lung injuries. It will protect adult consumer choice, and it will continue to lower deadly cigarette use in the state. There is a common ground where we can meet, and I feel like a little bit of understanding on both the side of the policymakers and the side of the vapor industry would go a long way in keeping e-cigs out of the hands of kids without infringing on of age adult access to far less harmful vapor products. This is a complicated issue that requires a much more complicated answer than just prohibition. Millions of lives literally depend on our ability to understand and utilize this technology. Vaping is going to change the world and flavors are going to help it. <laughs>